come up to the track here. Go right underneath of it. Now let's see how easy it is to move. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> This is a game changer to my chicken tractor operation right here. Peace and joy guys, welcome back to another video, Drumheller Farms. Today we've got some shop work we're gonna do. I'm gonna finally build my chicken tractor dolly. Now, this is something that I have needed to do since last season. And uh, my back at the end of the season was messed up. So I've been needing to build a dolly now for a year. I'm finally gonna do it. The weather today sucks. Now spring is supposed to be here, but take a look at what's going on out here. The sun came out, but man, it's been snowing on and off and it got down to about 16 degrees last night. It's looking like I might gonna have to have surgery on my knee. Um, I. I'm gonna go in for an MRI on Tuesday. Today is Saturday. And hopefully gonna get some news on what I need to do here. If I'm gonna to have to go in for surgery or physical therapy or what it is. Kinda of thinking I'm gonna to have to do surgery. I'm hoping it's a, like a microscopic deal to where, you know, I'm not gonna be out for weeks or months. But if I am, it's probably gonna put a damper on the pig production here on the farm. I don't know if I'll be able to handle that along with doing the cattle and the chickens and everything else. So I don't know if I'll introduce anything new, but we'll find out what's gonna happen. But today, let's take one day at a time and let's build a chicken tractor dolly. Let's go. This is somewhat of a Joel Soliton style chicken tractor dolly, whatever you wanna call it. Somebody sent me some pictures of his book and what he has in that I don't have all the measurements or angles, but I can kind of tell from a picture and that's what I'll be modeling mine after. So this is what it's gonna look like. This would be a side view. Um, up here would be the handle. It's gonna have a little kick off so that it doesn't drag the cross member over here doesn't drag on the ground and cause resistance. And then this, I'm thinking will be a 45 degree angle and then there'll be a flat sock right here that you can slip underneath the tractor with. And uh, this will be a 90 degree. And one thing I noticed about his that I couldn't figure out why it had it, but Looks like this is on an angle out of the ground, which makes sense for the same way that this is bent to not cause resistance with the grass. It'd be the same thing here. Plan on being about 60 inches tall. And I think I'm gonna do like 40 inches or 42, somewhere in that area wide. So here's all my materials. I got scheduled 40 half inch pipe. I got one piece of quarter by inch and a half, four foot long. These are eight foot long. I got three of them. <clears throat> and then these are some 10 inch airless rubber tires. Now I really wanted to use like a six or an eight inch, but all the six or eight inch tires were plastic. I'm gonna cut all the pieces in this nice heated shop and then I'll take them down to the pole barn where my welder is and show off my nice popcorn welds again, I guess. <laughs> all right, well, I ended up down here in the barn. It's not as clean, <laughs> it's not as well lit, and it's especially not as warm in here but I should have everything I need. And the main thing I need is the old Lincoln over there. So I'm gonna get these cut, kind of work with the minimal space I got here because it's such a mess. And hopefully get this thing assembled and get it done today. All right, 
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat these bars up to make that bend in it. I think that worked. They're both like right at the perfect angle from one another. I guess we'll find out. I gotta say though guys, those are almost perfect from one another. I mean, you can't get a much better bend. That is some redneck stuff there, buddy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> cut my two pieces for the width. I think I'm gonna stick to that 42 like I originally said. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And that should provide good enough width for those 10 foot wide chicken tractors we have. So that way the overall width will stay under four foot. Now, it's time to make my angle pieces. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys about something. I don't have a freaking clue what I'm doing here, but my guess is how long this needs to be has to be in relation to how big my tire is. So that when this is sitting on the ground, and you're being you're pulling the tractor that the thing isn't sitting a foot or however off of the ground so i'm gonna have to do some calculations here and i'm not 100 percent sure how i'm gonna figure it out but I'm sure if i think hard enough i'll be able to figure it out I mean, look at what I'm trying to do here. I told you, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but that's all right. That's how it goes most of the time when I'm doing things. And that's how you learn, you figure it out. So I should have enough to get two out of these. So probably need to cut a 45 on this thing first. Basically, my blade's not big enough to get through the whole cut. <laughs> so, what I have to do, kind of using that to get my general angle, then I'm coming over here and finishing the cut with a grinder. Say I did pretty good actually. Both about identical length. Pretty close to being a 45. I'm gonna start assembling. Remember when I told you guys it was a crappy day out and then I walked outside and the sun was shining? This is what I'm talking about. Poor Bristol, she's like, come on man, this sucks. Yeah, it's a crappy day. I'm sure there's somebody cringing watching me do this, but you know, I, I, I'm okay with that. It's almost like my tires are too stinking big. Dang it, what am I doing here? Something ain't right. I don't know really what to do at this point. So I need some smaller tires. got the dang thing off the ground which should make a pretty good difference 
not laying on the ground trying to weld this thing. Hmm, not bad. Hmm, not bad. Well, that's probably my nicest weld right there. But you know who taught me how to weld? Nobody. <laughs> And a lot of you guys right now are probably saying, yeah, we can tell, and hey, that's fine. You know, as long as this thing holds together, I don't, I don't really care what it looks like. I mean, I want it to look nice, but at the end of the day, I want it to work. All right, guys, well, it's chore time, and I gotta take a little break from this project get chores done, and then come back and see what I can get accomplished here. Well guys, I gotta tell you, it is very nice to have the ability to use this tractor to do chores with that bail-on roller. And as coincidence would have it, days before I re-injured my knee, I hooked that round bale on roller up to this thing, which it was tucked over into an area that I wouldn't have been able to get it out of with my knee in this kind of shape. So I'm very fortunate that uh, just a few days before I re-injured my knee, I had this thing hooked up and ready to go. It's a muddy mess out here, that's for sure. to the project. I decided to put two of these braces on. You know, I just thought mounting a tire or, or you know, on one side of this with a rod of some sort that's going to be welded, it just seems like it's going to be a lot of stress on this rod, which is what I planned on using. That's where I'm getting my tires from is this old dolly. So, I just feel like having, you know, a little bit more structural integrity to this thing will be a little bit better so that not all the weight's just right on that little rod right here, which I think will be strong enough, but I think it'd be better if there was a little more to it. Now, this is probably the most important part. I've got that little magnet, uh, magnet, which is that one on the right there. That's a perfect 90. And then I'm just making sure it's true with the contractor square. And I've got my height propped up here and I'm gonna weld this cross member and then I'll set the other one up and make sure that that one's square at the same time. The frame is almost complete. I gotta put some tabs on here, and I'm gonna put cross braces in each corner. I uh, cut some 45s on the leftover piece of pipe that I had, and uh, should be right in business after this.
finally a well I think I can be proud of. That looks pretty sweet. All right, it's time to mount these tires on this rig. Basically, I want it to where it's just sitting in this corner so that the dolly is not very far off the ground when it's laying back. And I also need it to be enough to where it's beyond that peg, which is going to be really close. So we'll make a mark right there and see how it turns out. parked all the chicken tractors on this hill for the for the year because it has a nice slope to it thinking that everything would just kind of fall off of it and looks like everything survived the winter really well we had about 12 inches of really heavy snow at one point looks like this did a good job of everything staying intact nothing blew away but we're gonna check out this chicken tractor dolly see how well this thing works so let's check out a few of the features on this guy here a couple things the top is bent okay that is so when you lay this dolly down which you're going to see here in a minute this bar does not drag on the ground creating resistance to pull the tractor you'll notice these tabs sticking up Okay, and that's where the tractor will hit and keep it from sliding any further up the dolly. Also, you'll notice that this bottom piece is bent as well, keeping it up off the ground again to keep from building any sort of resistance as it drags along the ground. Also, these tabs providing a very thin piece of steel to get underneath the tractor and slide right on the smooth surface. I did grind down all these welds so that it would be a nice smooth transition and not muck up the bottom of the tractor. So let's try this out. This is the first time I've tried it. Hopefully <laughs> it works. So this thing's very lightweight. If I had to guess, this whole thing probably only weighs 20 pounds or less, probably. So come up to the tractor, go right underneath of it. Notice the tabs, keep it from going in any further. Notice the chicken tractor is only about an inch and a half off the ground. Now let's see how easy it is to move. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Folks, this is a game changer to my chicken tractor operation right here. All the time and energy spent pulling these chicken tractors six o'clock in the morning yanking my bait back out this is this is a game changer how easy i mean let's pull one-handed jeez oh pete i can't believe i spent all that time yanking on those things all I had to do was take this chime to build a tractor. Again, this is a game changer to moving chicks. I can't believe I waited a year before making this dolly. I'm a little embarrassed at the same time of being really excited over the fact that this is gonna make things a heck of a lot easier. I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section. And I'm looking forward to chicken tractor season. It's gonna be coming here. We're, we're, we're uh, a month away from getting our chicks. But, uh, seven or eight weeks away from going out on pasture. Hopefully this field being nice green grass, which it's turning green. You can kind of see even after yesterday's weather but seven eight weeks away from moving chickens every 12 hours thanks for watching god bless